Sinners Gonna Sin. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Hurt people hurt people. I want to talk about this again today. You see, Pastor Bob, we talk about this quite a bit. But there are a lot of people who are hurt and continue to hurt others. And it continues to happen because we don't understand that we're doing it. So, by the way, I know, it's huge. <laughs> This is our coffee, our ground coffee, our classic blend. And it's in two pound bags now. And it's a great deal. Coffee has gone up in price. We're excited that we could still offer a good deal this way. It's, um, it's the price of two of our bags with more than three times the coffee and the same price for shipping. I know. So that's what we're doing. And of course, our newest blend is at Banger's Brew, Holy Cacao. And uh, with cacao beans from the Amazon rainforest, and it's awesome. And our mug of the month, poster of the month, t-shirt of the month, is this one. Embrace the grace. And you can get all of that and so much more right here. We are MetalWearFamily.com. Dear Pastor Bob, you seem to have a different idea about sin that I'm used to in my church. I've been told all of my life that I'm sinful and need to repent. I have been to the altar to rededicate my life many times throughout my life. Your teaching on this is surprising and foreign to me. I'm used to being corrected by my Christian friends all the time. I have to admit, it does feel like some bondage. But isn't that biblical? Can you clarify? Yes, I can. Thank you for asking the question. And thank you to all of you who write in questions. There's no way that I can use them all, but I will use some. And thank you for that. Well, my idea about sin isn't different. It's just, well, in my opinion, biblical. It's the whole reason that Jesus died on the cross. It's a whole reason that he gave us his, his free gift of grace. And it's the whole reason that because of his forgiveness and because of what he decided to give us as a free gift, our sins no longer count against us. Now that's where we have to start. And you know, there's something that you said in your question that I think is, is really interesting. I've been to the altar to rededicate my life many times throughout my life. Isn't that kind of strange? Folks, if I had the power to be perfect, I would. And if you follow me along for an hour, you'll see that I'm not. And neither are any of us. Why? Because we're imperfect beings. We're imperfect beings in need of a savior. Jesus knows that, died for us. Our sins no longer count against us and this is where we're at. It isn't about my ability to dedicate myself because I can't. Now, in my mind, I can. In my heart, I can. But in my flesh, it doesn't work. Because dedication would involve perfection. And I mess up. It's about surrender. It's about surrendering to him. It's about being able to say, Lord, it's not me, it's you. And if I can't dedicate, folks, I can't rededicate either. <laughs> because I couldn't dedicate in the first place. Now, devotion is another word that's important here. To be devoted to Christ is one of the things, but dedication means that I have the ability to do this, and I don't. It's his ability. It's his righteousness. It's his free gift of grace. 
But here's the thing, folks. When we continue to perpetuate this untruth, we continue to keep people in bondage, and we continue to focus on sin and not on our Savior, and we continue to do this, hurt people, who hurt people, who hurt people, and even very well-meaning Christians continue to hurt each other. Well, I want to go right to the scripture today, and let's look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Great scripture. You're going to like this. And he says, Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for each other. Well, there you go. And, uh, you know, this person said, I've been just used to being corrected all the time by the people all around me, and it feels like bondage. Well, yeah, it would. Because it's not the point. The point is intense and unfailing love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. It forgives, it disregards the offenses of others. It puts us in a much better place, doesn't it? And then it continues by describing how we're supposed to be with each other. It says, practice hospitality to one another, those of the household of faith. Be hospitable, be a lover of strangers with brotherly affection for the unknown guests the foreigners, the poor, and all others who come your way who are of Christ's body. In other words, that's the thing that connects us. And can I tell you that, you know, I've traveled the world so many times. And everywhere I go, <clears throat> I'm at home. I'm at home with fellow believers who have the same heart. And even those places where we don't speak the same language, it's a communication of agape. And I love that, and it's very true. And it says, and in each instance, do it ungrudgingly, cordially, and graciously, without complaining, but as representing him. And then in verse 10, it says, as each of you have received a gift, a particular spiritual talent, a, a gracious divine in, endowment, your spiritual gifts, Enjoy it for one another as benefits, good trustees of God's many-sided grace, faithful stewards of the extremely diverse powers and, and gifts granted to Christians by unmerited favor. All of us represent a different part of the body. You have this gift, I have this gift, you have that gift, and we use them all together, and as we're all together, we represent the body of Christ in its fullness. We need each other for that reason. We'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks. But this is so important, folks, that we love, love, love. Love God. Love each other. Love you. So this is the foundation of who we are in Christ. This is the great news of grace. Embrace it. Embrace the grace. This is the great news of his forgiveness. And this is the great news of death and sin. Sin is dead. Death is dead. That's what we talked about last month. Death is dead. Cool. So if that's the case, folks, then I begin the process of living. And instead of correcting each other, like we said the other day, I begin to encourage my friends who are maybe struggling. Instead of this, it's this. Love each other. And as I said in the very beginning, above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. And forgives and disregards the offenses of others. If we love each other, folks, our concentration isn't on sin, and we sin less. If you concentrate on sin, you'll sin more. Okay. 
Well, folks, thank you once again for joining me. And don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.